Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Not too much? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to talk more. Like, other. Somebody has our name tag. Somebody has our name tag, so it's balancing. All right, so we'll begin. So imagine what it would be like to walk in the very kingdom of God together with your brothers and sisters in Christ while still here on earth. Imagine if your own families were open to the Holy Spirit's inspirations and united in a common mission of evangelization. So these are the treasures that God has blessed us with. And wherever we go, people count them. There's seven. <laughs> seven. seven. Our oldest is 17 and the youngest is just turning five. <laughs> So the question we put to you, noble ladies and gentlemen of the kingdom, <laughs> is with the limited time we have here on earth, can our personal families, our Regnum Christi family, and our time and service in the apostolate coexist without chaos? <laughs> <laughs> Behold, chaos. <laughs> this is one of the many enemy drogue attacks that occur during Archaeos. Some have argued, and we even heard it here in the conference, that team life and apostolic initiatives and commitments and that take precious time away from our families, away from our children, and that in our absence, while we're out saving the world, they're left to suffer alone, feeling the woundedness of neglect. <laughs> Imagine this boy without his sword. <laughs> but what if it were possible, what if our God was actually capable of providing the grace needed for members of Regnum Christi to successfully include our children in the beautiful work of this movement? And what if the time you and your family invested in apostolate actually serve to bring you closer together and stronger than you would have been without this common mission. Mm. Yes, they are our children, and yes, we need to love them in the best way that we can, but we cannot forget God has a plan for them to be saints and for them to bring souls to heaven with them too. <laughs> Christians, then what should make our families any different than the heroic disciples who gave their lives for the gospel nearly 2,000 years ago, driven with a sense of urgency and mission? These boys at Arcathios, they know, it's drilled into them, that the enemy never takes a day off. So if there's a mission planned and it's bright and sunny, great. If it's raining, storming, they still go on their mission. <laughs> These young, aspiring apostles need our examples to help them. If they're going to be able to be trained and formed to stand their ground in the battlefields they will face in this life, they need to be formed. We first heard about Reg and Christie when Brian was just about to begin 10 years of university to become a physician. And we were so excited to hear about this amazing, amazing thing that there was going on in the church. Um, and at the time, we were just waiting for something to inspire us to grow in our faith. We felt stagnant, and we felt we lacked mission, and that was concerning to us. So when we heard about Regnum Christi, our hearts knew this is what we wanted. But we were like, how do we fit in all the prayers, apostolate, and team life. It wasn't long after we joined the movement that we realized what a great gift this was for us to support us in our family life. And it was just amazing how it helped me be so much better of a mom and wife, and it helped me be more balanced. Before one can become a physician, 
they must first learn compartmentalized aspects of what makes up medicine. In the beginning, it's in blocks. You learn about the cell, about biochemistry. Eventually, you move up to systems. Cardiac system, immune system, and so on, and so on, and so on. You start to realize, though, that to understand the true physiology of the human body, you have to start to put all these processes together. Valerie and I would argue that our formational and apostolic life should be unified in our family as well. Mm. And that eventually everyone around you should be able to look at your family and say, we know the vision and the mission of that family. They don't keep it to themselves. It's evident for all to see. With Brian in full-time university and with our ever-growing family, uh, there was no way we could attend the youth and family encounter in San Jose. But part of our growth was learning to ask for support. It was so important to us that we go. And so we did that, and we also drove 32 hours one way <laughs> uh, to attend. Um, actually, it was a good trip. We listened to glory stories the whole time. We were with that. Um, and what a great blessing to have a little bit of time with Father Albro here that brought so much joy to us. So there's actually one more kid in the basket. Of <laughs> Prior to this, though, I remember going on my first spiritual exercises, and I was like that panicking mom. I don't know if you've, you women have seen that. Women who have to leave their little ones behind to go on the spiritual exercises. So I was like all tearful, and you're like, it's just going to be okay. And, um, but the beautiful thing is, year after year, as my daughter has watched me going to spiritual exercises, she ended up desiring the same thing. So Maria, who is here, um, joined Reagan Christie last year. And and it was never an expectation, and we've expressed that to our children as well. We do not expect at all that you join the movement. Um, in fact, when she was discerning, I'm like, check out the other movements too. Like, just make sure this is for you. This is your charism. And so, um, but she joined, and our second daughter is now discerning as well. So, what a beautiful thing. You know, being able to really love the vocation and use the means that are there for us to grow in our faith um, is just such a joy. And how that has helped so much in our family life. <coughs> Much of what is seen in the kingdom of our Kathos is made in part from what I learned in the movement. For it taught me structure and discipline and confidence in following the will of God under the legitimate order of the church. God also gave me the grace to be able to manage time, to be able to do more with him than I could on my own in the same time frame. This was an essential grace. For without it, I do not believe I could have been as successful in my medical training, been a good husband and father, and still had the time and energy to pour into these apostolates. Sometimes I wondered if he was Superman, so I'm like, when do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Through Reagan Christie, I learned that when I say my prayers each day, our family is stronger. When our family prays together, we are stronger. When Valerie and I go off to retreats and come back, our family is stronger. And when we include our children, our family, side by side in the apostolate, once again, we are stronger. So Brian has always had a passion in his heart <coughs> to form boys into men of God. And at the beginning of Reagan Christie, Ah, the thought of letting my husband go was so hard. Uh, like for a week, I was like, no. But um, I learned through, through my prayers and spiritual direction, Christ is my rock, and that he was taking care of our family. So the reason that I believe our Kathios has been fruitful for nearly 15 years now. It's really quite simple. We focus on brotherhood, on friendship, on rites of passage in becoming men, which are sorely neglected these days. 
The theatrics, and there are a lot of theatrics. <laughs> Explosions, smoke grenades, fog, everything. Everything you think of. The theatrics add the spectacular, but they're not what make up the life-changing elements of our Kathios. It's back to that brotherhood, that friendship. Knowing in our kingdom, Christ is king. God is king. All our, us other characters, even though they have crowns in that, they're the highest they'll ever be as a prince. God is the king, and they know that, and they enter in. Just as Mr. and Mrs. Garrett were speaking yesterday about how bonding it is for, for team members to, to do things like this together, I was reflecting also uh, in these past days on what it's like for soldiers who've gone off to war and then they return. They have an understanding, they've been through something that no one else around them will understand and that's usually why they don't really want to share it. Our teams, if they've worked together in apostolate, they've been to war and we all know sometimes it can be war. When they return, they've got something that they didn't have before. They've learned that friendship, that support, and accountability, which is reinforced in our team lives. You have heard of a crisis in our church, and at times extends into various areas of our movement as well, where men can be disengaged, where they take a back seat to the zeal of their holy and yet enchanting wives. <laughs> This is not so in the realm of Luminaris. Here, I see men excited. I see men engaged. I see them moving heaven and earth to help in the planning, the setup, and the implementation of each year's mission. It's an honor to walk with these men. I see them coming to camp, almost kissing the ground, so glad to be back in the I see them brushing the dust off their shields of faith, bring them out again. And for some of these men, realizing for the first time that they carry a sword in their sheath that they hadn't been using. It's a beautiful thing to witness. And I know these men who come, these fathers, uh, our team can go anywhere from depending on the year, uh, including the legionaries who are there. We've had at our peak up to 90 men and 150 boys. So this is a, a very intense uh, week, and it extends to about 11 days for the older boys who come to the their leadership. I loved seeing how God was using this camp. And soon we were getting letters from the girls. Why did we not have an adventure too? <laughs> they were so jealous. And uh, my daughters were also like, we need something like this. Um, but I was afraid of youth apostolates. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> guide that's my passion but um, and so I was waiting for someone else to start it <laughs> but it was not happening um, and I also knew that following the Holy Spirit's inspirations and what he puts on your heart there will be true joy and true serenity there so Brian just looked at me and said, you know, no one else is going to do it. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> so anyway, I, I took the risk. I'm like, okay, let's start something new for the girls. But, but I'm passionate about the feminine genius. That cannot, this cannot be another boys camp. This has to be about the feminine genius as taught by St. John Paul II. I wanted to help girls become women of God, filled with authentic beauty, dignity, grace, and leadership. And so I had only, let's see, six months to launch this thing. And I had no idea what a girls' camp would look like in comparison with the boys. It felt like I was jumping off a cliff into the darkness while blindfolded. <laughs> it was so scary. So scary. Just ask the consecrated who was working with me. Um, but it was so amazing. God provided 25 incredibly talented and creative people to help me. 
and the team continued to grow. And on average, there's been about 20 young women and 20 moms who come every year, and about 100 girls. So just like some of the many incredible apostolates that so many of you have been called to bring into existence, Arcathios and Captivania are simply filling a unique role in building up the kingdom. Now we have argued when we go off to team life or go off to serve in the apostolate that when we return, we're better parents. But what about during our time in the apostolate? How do we be better parents to our children, to our families in those moments? Whether for us it's at the camp itself or during the whole year when we're doing the planning. Because there's a lot of planning. We believe, and in the structure that, that God asked us to help create here, we believe that involving our children is essential. We involve them in the earliest planning stages of each year. We make suggestions, we wrestle with ideas, for hearing their perspective as youth brings great balance to what we are doing. They know the storyline cold, in fact, better than most of the men on my team. And our realm, Luminoris, uh, we have a storyline. Think of Narnia, Lord of the Rings, but better. <laughs> just, just more explicitly Catholic. So, so we have, like it's loaded with Catholic truths. It, it, we're basically, while they're there, they're living in a parable. They're living in an allegory of Christian life. From the moment they arrive to the moment they leave. And they are open. When you let these young ones, and even us, <laughs> as soon as we get there, when you just let their imaginations go, they forget the world that they left. It's, it's a super retreat, right? They're there, they're open, they're listening, they're excited, they're part of the missions. Continuing with including our, our children, uh, Maria and, and our second daughter, Christine, actually just helped a few weeks ago in kind of collaboration between these two apostolates. We were running a winter camp, so we we're up to our third winter camp now for, for our Kathos. We'll go out in sub-zero temperatures, uh, learning survival skills in the castle, still in the medieval life. And Maria and Christine helped bring some, some Captivinians secretly in while the boys were doing their missions in the winter camp. They totally renovated this structure, like it wouldn't have looked like this at all in our boys' camp. <laughs> All of a sudden, the boys, they finished their mission, they just helped save this young lady, and uh, <laughs> it was a good mission, but all of those broke, and all of a sudden, they get invited to go through the portal, that's how we get from realm to realm, through this fog, misty portal that we go through, they invited them to come to Captivania for a feast in their honor, so these boys are like, wow, they get in here, amazing food, nicely decorated, uh, but it was beautiful to see that collaboration, and she was able to gather some, some young ladies to help her. She also uh, went further this, this past fall. She, she took the time, and it was beautiful that you did this, Maria. She made these wax seal personalized letters to send out to all of our team throughout Western Canada and to come to a fancy social and meeting at our house, just to kind of pre-planning and integration. 50 team members came from throughout Western Canada. 30 spent the night in our house. <laughs> definitely bonding. And, and it, it's actually beautiful to see because most of these people, a lot of them, especially the young team, have grown up in the camps now. Now that we're in our 15th year, many of them are mentors for our children. And our kids who have been confirmed have chosen those team members as, as uh, our sponsors. This is from the winter camp. My son Stephen, he is only 14, and yet he volunteered in a heartbeat to come an entire day early to help his father set up for the winter camp. An extra day, no screens, it's cold, setting up all these medieval tents. Uh, very bonding, but not only was it bonding, the few of us who were there to set up were privileged to have this, and how often does this happen, a private mass in a medieval castle by candlelight with newly ordained Father Michael O'Connor. Wow. Uh, 
Yeah. It was beautiful. Even my son Stephen said afterwards, as we're driving home after the camp was done, that like dad, that was like one of the most special masses I've ever been to. So beautiful. And a few years ago, um, you know, we were thinking, okay, how do we get some extra family time? Because that's important to us too, that we have time just with our kids. We're like, why don't we go across Canada with our trailer? And the kids, are, you can only do that in the summer, though. Hmm. And uh, so we went to the kids. We're like, hey, kids, guess what? What if we go across Canada? We can let the teams handle the camps for a year, and we just go. There was the eerie sound <laughs> of crickets chirping. <laughs> <laughs> and the blank expressions on their faces were super funny. <laughs> and they, and they, they're like, this is our summer. This is what we love. And so it's so beautiful to, to know that this is their heart, too. <laughs> so the second year that I was directing the camp, I had my baby two months ahead of time. And so obviously I had to bring him. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, he's, he's Lord Justin. <laughs> and it went over so well at the girls' camp, probably much better than if we brought him to the boys' camp. <laughs> it, was great, it was a great way to build the feminine genius, you know? Like, they just loved having him there. It was really special. And as you can see, uh, Lord Justin is speaking to his agent. <laughs> I think it's really important that young moms know they have so much to give in the apostolate. They don't need to hide in their houses. I mean, that would be easy for me. I'm a total introvert. And so it would be very easy for me to just use my family as an excuse not to reach out beyond my family. And, and so it's been such a joy for me that as I've stepped out of that comfort zone, um, it's just been such a grace to, this is my social life. I mean, like, I've, I've formed such strong friendships and such strong community, and what a joy that is. So much more than what a, if I had just stayed in the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. so. And it's beautiful to see a lot of grandparents there with their grandkids as well, if the yeah. parents aren't able to come. And the kids can see what it means to be a light in the world that we go out. So, and since the renewal, we've been really collaborating with our sections for extra support, which has been so beautiful. And our hope, too, that people from the camp, so some people, will probably be, um, you know, find their vocation in Reagan Christie as well as that step closer in their walk with Christ. This past year, um, God put it on my heart to bring 10 people from Captivania to the spiritual exercises with me. So I probably asked, I kept asking the Holy Spirit, who do I invite? And I probably invited 30 people, and 11 came. So, and I do think that's a sign of the renewal, um, because what a joy to share our spirituality with them. <laughs> Imagine how easy it is for our legionaries, as priests of the king, to be able to share, provide the sacraments, offer spiritual direction to boys and men whose hearts are open and whose walls that we normally have around us are down in this entire time. And imagine, he's not in this picture, but imagine how cool Father Daniel Brandenburg looks throwing his tomahawk. <laughs> women coming to share Christ with the women and girls who come whose hearts are wide open to receive grace and healing and that's what I hear over and over I don't work with the moms I work more with the uh, young team members but the common theme is these women really so many of them come with burdens and are healed of whatever God wants to work with them at that moment so in case you're wondering, these are fire swords. <laughs> the role of our family and in the insanely crazy realm of Luminoris is put one 
of the many beautiful creative ideas God has up his sleeve. Our challenge to you is that you allow God to take you out of the box. Mm -hmm. That you allow God to inspire you, to challenge you, to do something unique and different, if that's what he's calling. And to challenge you also to take away those kind of preconceived boundaries you have, that there could be more that you, your family, and your team can do that you didn't imagine in the past. This is at our portal. This is how you get between realms, is through there. <laughs> so, we're not called to be lights hidden under a bushel basket. We know that. But to be lights set on a hill for all to see. And just as St. John of the Cross inspired us to ascend Mount Carmel in faith and prayer, we, in Bregnum Christi, are called to an ascent of family life. To bring our children to heaven. To work together with them in building up the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit will never let us down. Like where he calls, the grace is there. And I believe we've highlighted just a few of the blessings that we've seen, but I could talk for so long on the graces that we've received. Yes, we're still a messy family. We're, you know, very non-perfect, you know. But to know that all these graces come to us through giving of ourselves, which seems so little in comparison to what God has given us. He's been so generous. So, if you don't want to reinvent the wheel, and you're thinking to yourself that you actually might look good in leather and chains. <laughs> imagine, imagine, if we were to extend the borders of our medieval realm, extend our map, so that territories like Arcathios and Captivania could exist closer to you. In the summer of 2018, we're hoping to launch our first expansion into northern Saskatchewan. There's a, a member up there who has 600 acres on a lake, and so, oh, on my mind's going crazy already. <laughs> so, we're going to call it, so it'll be Arcathios, but it'll be the territory of Kalor, so it's like unified. And we're artistically and ambitiously going to rename the lake it's on as the Sea of Kalor, so Kalor will be its name. And I've already spoken to a person who's going to help us. He, he actually builds Viking wooden ships. <laughs> so, so, I just encourage you to think that way. So, if you happen to have access to some land in your area, and you have a team that's saying, you, know, you know what, we got some creative ideas too. Valerie and I are happy to just share with you, help you get it going, help it launch. Uh, if you want to fly us down to, to share more, that's great. Maybe throw in an extra seat for all my furs. <laughs> but we'd be happy to come down. Uh, and, and we do want to challenge you. Uh, this is a beautiful type of apostolate. It works for everyone. That's so fun. It's fun. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So anyway, just be open because we're hearing it here this weekend. And it's, I think it's reinvigorating all of us. It's, you know, we have to remember who we are as a movement, who we are as a people. You know, we've been sitting on the sidelines too, too long here. And God really does want to do something new and exciting with us. So I'd also like to invite you. Um, Sometimes the best way to understand it is to see it, and that's definitely true in this case. These pictures are only a sampling. I can't tell you how hard it was to narrow down these pictures. We have tons, tons. We have a video as well. Uh, we're hoping to redo our video. It's about six years old, but you can see it. Uh, here's our website, our KPOs in Captivania. There's information on both of them. We also have Facebook pages, and just like all of our apostolates, you know, if, if you ever see a post from the Facebook page, it's great. If you like it, click like. That may, usually means it's higher up on feeds and others will see it. We, we're not focused on numbers. We want somebody to actually be touched and, you know, come to know Christ because of what they saw. Usually when we make a post on Facebook, we'll put scriptures and such with it. So, anyway, Archetheos and Capitania, our, our family, thank you for your time.